Good morning from San Francisco. This is Joe Nally. I'm an advocator, supporter, and ally of the Center of Political Innovation. As a married man, I am focusing on my family, and it's difficult for me to attend CPI meetings and such. But nonetheless, I love tuning in to Kale Maupin's stream and learning from what CPI has to offer. This morning, I would like to talk about communism. And importantly, I answered the basic question, what is communism? If you ask an average American, what is communism? You are likely going to get mixed answers and negative connotations. Perhaps being an open communist today in 2023, especially in America, is an uphill battle that requires convincing the public and opponents that this word has to mean something else. In other words, it's been tarnished. And we have to ask what we're really fighting for, if it aligns with something that's ethical and moral. In other words, I believe we are fighting for humanity and the future of a civilization that puts humanity first, because communism is that political system that puts humanity first. But again, to the American public, communism has been tarnished and to them, it means a form of totalitarianism, where the elites share the wealth and everyone else works for them. Communism for the American public means a welfare state, and where nothing is ever built and people live paycheck to paycheck at a forced work position, where everything has the same value and the state determines your quality of life. Communism, in this definition, feels completely obsolete and arbitrary and feels like it's a state condition rather than say anything good for society. How then could we argue for a good communism or an actual communism if the word is smeared to such a historical extent in the American situation? And this is not only something we should worry about, but as the word communism means totally something else to the higher academic setting or culturally speaking, the synthetic left. In my own personal history, I got my master's degree at the School of Visual Arts in design research, and I myself am a huge nerd of the French school of thought, critical theory, political science, and that kind of avant-garde philosophy. And I myself was in the belly of the beast of that which you would call the postmodern studies of higher academic thought, and I honestly enjoyed what I learned and read. Now, the word communism in higher academia does not mean the communism we're talking about. It means something else from an, it doesn't even mean like what Karl Marx is saying from an orthodox definition. In the academic setting, communism is an ideal. It's an abstract theory of living that has something to do with the Epicurean society, where people live together as friends and share everything that is provided by a welfare state. Nowhere is there a scientific socialism or a theory about how production is made. None of that. It, it really just boils down to a spa safe space ideology of just feeling good, like going on a camping trip and, uh, you know, let the robots do all the work and the real communists, you know, stay at home, consume, watch YouTube videos all day long and see what Vouch has to say or something. Even other French philosophers, like Alain Badou, has argued that communism is a state of mind. And like being a Christian and having faith in religion, communism is that state of mind, like being in heaven, and everything that is against that abstract utopian idea, it must be the devil. So what is communism if the American public thinks it's a totalitarian unfair system, and higher academia thinks it means some kind of abstract Thomas More utopian state of mind. So I hopefully know that at CPI, and by following a true definition of communism, communism can be defined as a state that has reached an economic level of post-scarcity, where there is an overabundance of resources for everyone, where there is no need to focus on getting those said resources anymore, and the, these new resources are generated from high technology, while people can go focus on the grander pursuits of life. Now that's idealist communism, but that's kind of how it's been defined in the past. This of course leaves that wound for that science fiction scenario that is basically a practical finish line to run to. 
So this is where in higher academia, you can assume that communism must be that utopian state of mind where robots can create, quote, fully automated luxury communism, as stated by Aran Bastani for Verso Books, or in a radical and a wazy lay, the abolition of work, as said by anarchist writer Bob Black, where work is the enemy and we might as well just have fun and play games. Don't work at all. Work's evil. So it's not about a science or human effort to make communism happen. Rather, what we're hearing from Black and Bastani is that it's rather wishful thinking, assuming that others should do the sa same thing and that work is for the elites and that everyone can go get a happy welfare society like communism, but it's ironically done by the super profits done by capitalism. And so I think this must be the center of this synthetic left thinking, that communism becomes I like me, this is what I want, and if you're hurting me, that must be racist or something. So, I believe that, that these ideals from academia is making the word communism more hard for us to explain to others about this post-scarcity condition. And again, it feels more aligned with laziness and utopian than action. So what? how, how are we supposed to solve this conundrum? In a way, if you think about it, this is actually the current system we live under. This is a byproduct of what capitalism does. But the capitalism, it may offer this Andrew Yang welfare state idealism, but the bigger irony of it all is that it's for the wealthy and not for everyone else. It's kind of just either you're in with us or you're not. And therefore, these liberal viewpoints fall short because it degrades the human as a consumer, that everything becomes this libertarian involuntary, quote unquote, order, where if people want to contribute to society, they should only do it when they feel like it. And so I think this is where this era is coming from, that if everybody was just safe at home and let others do it, nothing gets done. And so this is kind of the capitalist mind frame to make everyone feel like a safe consumer. And again, doesn't that sound like a prison state we currently live under, where everyone is in a pod and no one does anything that is life affirming? You know, it's not that we can actually finally go out and write novels or go to like it fishing as what Karl Marx wished, but rather we're relying on selfish idealisms of libertarianism, where we are better off in our own big houses, with our own parks, and our own equally selfish lovers, and we are all consumers into subjective things that we might as well designate it as communism. Again, I don't think that this is communism. And I don't think members of CPI think this is communism. And this is where I woke up to the truth to the synthetic left and America's attempt to disvalue and disown communism and give it this kind of argument and animation, ammunition for the opposite, the, the anti-communists. Now with this in mind, it honestly feels like the anti-communists are right in many ways because if communism is a system based on jealousy or envy or mass murder, then it also is this kind of, I guess, system of the lazy, as they like to say. So why would they believe that? It seems like the anti-communist opposition has arguments against a fictitious form of communism that justifies their own existence in a weird way. And to me, you have to think on that other side why they're being misled. And so... The anti-communist faction and its nationalist opposition have that argument, but its conclusion, I believe, is ultimately fascism. Now, this is why I bring up fascism, because it gets interesting here. Because the American public, remember, fascism is just as icky as communism, because both are totalitarian systems. And even more interesting is that academia has incredible distrust and hatred for fascism. And there are even some in academia that say communism is just fascism with a happy face and smile. So where's the similarity? You know, where, how did fascism or communism become fascism that's happy? And I think, I think about this a lot. And how do I convince the public that this is different? And I think we can't just say fascism is a totalitarian system, or it's some kind of, uh, as in-group communists like to say, fascism is just capitalism and decay, I feel that that is a, a communist-centric way of thinking, and we're not really addressing what's going on here. 
So if you think about it in a dry definition, fascism is an economic system and ideology where the state is aligned with a nationalist oligarchy, kind of like an oligarchic dictatorship that supposedly represents the nation shape and its people, where the means of production is dictated by a selected elite view, not everyone. And in order to immediately build production that benefits a supposed urgent civilization need and aesthetic against everything else. Now, what do I mean by that? You know, why would I address need and aesthetic there? Because fascism has this need to go forward and to get something done, whether it's, you know, kick the minorities out, uh, build this statue, we're going to go to the moon, invade another country. You know, they need an aesthetic, you know, Mussolini style propaganda and a purpose to get it done. And this drives this nationalist forever to go forward. That's why you hear get Donald Trump being called a fascist because you have MAGA and the an aesthetic and a need. We're going to make America great again and you're going to wear a red hat. And so that might be kind of an idealistic ideal, but the, the, the definition is still the same. Fascism is controversial because it can only benefit an oligarchic dictatorship and fight for something that blinds people into submission for a supposed greater cause. So again, why would communism be associated with that kind of fascism? Because it assumed that communism and fascism are based upon an anti-human ideology. That's it. Now, this isn't true about communism. Communism, communism isn't anti-humanism. When you consider the fight for communism as a fight for humanity, things are a little different. Because alone, fascism is a fight for an ideal, an urban legend, a niche way of thinking that can only benefit a libertarian mindset. Fascism becomes anti-human because it believes that might is right and only the strong prevail to make things happen. Again, fascism is rather a dictatorship that can only benefit the strong and their whims against what is good for humanity as a whole. And I'm sure Caleb Maupin knows about these tendencies when he debated the sincere fascism of culture thug, uh, Augustus Sol Invictus, and Eric Stryker. All of these three fascists relate back to being the strong man against the weak. And it goes to show the remedy, they say, is just toughen up, go to the gym, and be against the weak. It's a mentality and attitude. That's what fascism is. And I believe this is the main thing where communism divides itself from fascism. As communism wasn't something invented in Karl Marx in a single night, it wasn't Karl Marx invented communism, you know. Um, yeah. But as a historical connection, you know, Karl Marx was getting communism from a historical connection to a rich history that envisioned a future after capitalism. And again, fascism seems to negate this process and or progress and hence ends up defending capitalist interest. Thus, I think this is where the whole motif of fascism, fascism is capitalism and decay comes from, because fascism doesn't have an opinion about capitalism. In fact, I think fascism in many ways will defend capitalism because it cares about the nation and nationalism or the might is right ideal. So that is where I believe communism is a fight for humanity, while fascism is an anti-human statement. You know, that is something you should tell everyone what communism is. You know, it's not synthetic left pandering to the safe space ideal of being lazy. And it isn't some kind of insidious, communism isn't this kind of insidious program to overthrow people of the earth. And it's not an economic system that will take your freedom and liberty away, quote unquote. It's none of those things, communism. What communism should be is that it should be a scientific and working system where everything we have now can rather focus on an economy and culture that serves humanity first. The fight against capitalism should be a universal fight for humanity, as capitalism is irrational, like an old operating system working on a new computer. Can you imagine running DOS on Windows 11? Maybe in a reactionary way, but not really. It's not that capitalism is evil, it's just that it's old and needs to retire. It's kind of a novelty or something. Therefore, anti-capitalism is the struggle for, of today, Though there may be a synthetic left types of to criticize capitalism, as we always hear, what they're talking about capitalism isn't the capitalism that sincere communists are talking about. But I believe no matter what political spectrum you are from, left or right, if you criticize capitalism, you're doing something correct. Today, you have to remember that there are existing forms of socialism in the world that are constantly neglected 
by international forces. These socialist governments look out for the people and promise a way of living where human beings can have real freedom and liberty that capitalism and liberal libertarianism cannot offer. These existing systems should be the role models to what a practical communist system should look like, and we have to respect their existence the same way an eventual communist system will come into America. But communism does not come from the optimism of accelerationism, as I said before, or let technology control everything as we put everyone into pods. It's not that at all. Communism requires each, everyone, to put in a human effort and to make it happen, happen as we have a say in the matter. Communism, in essence, is a paternal system that cares about humanity and wishes to do good for everyone. It's not neglectful like libertarianism or abusive like fascism. Communism is a scientific way forward that can only benefit the way we work, act, think, and do. I believe the Center for Political Innovation offers solution and answers to many issues within communism today and gives everyone a practical future to what to expect and a future where everyone is controlled, not controlled by the state or anything like that, but a future that is paternal. It's a future where you can become wealthy, but without capitalism. Everyone can contribute society, and it is in a totalitarian way. It's a meaningful in many ways. It's where people on earth are no longer through censorship or social isolation, but peace on earth starts with the freedom to do more and achieve greatness through negotiation, diplomacy, all of it for humanity and production. I thank CPI for letting me speak this morning and delivering my message. I hope to see everyone in CPI in person soon. Thank you.